Greetings to you all. Uh, my name is Busho, and I am coming to you from flyingcloudzen.org today to talk with you for just a few minutes, um, five, probably five, seven minutes, maybe today. And I'd like to talk just a little bit about encouragement. And encouragement seems um, like a perennial need that all of us need to experience. We need to feel encouraged, like there's some wind in our sails. Um, but it also feels especially timely now during such difficult times that we are enduring collectively. Um, no one would deny that all, all of us have had some very, very trying months and um, are still in the midst of a profound change and um, a time of great burden, I think, collectively. I think humanity is really feeling, feeling a collective weight. Um, and so some encouragement, encouragement for all of us is um, what I'm going to talk about just a little bit. I hope you find something in this that's of help to you. And when I think about um, encouragement from my perspective, um, I've got a Christian background and a Zen Buddhist practice. I am the most uh, buoyed. I am the most uplifted. I think it's fair to say I'm the most encouraged, literally given courage by, that's what that word means. Um, less by promises of what could be um, or even ideas and speculation about how things might improve or get better, although that's certainly the case. I find that my sails are more filled, my courage is more emboldened by taking stock of what in my immediate experience is already giving me strength and hope and support. And I think the reason this resonates with me a little more deeply is because it isn't abstract. I don't need to call to mind a particular vision uh, or even belief system about what things uh, might be and find courage in relation to striving toward them. Rather, I find um, encouragement from noticing, calling into conscious awareness what is already present in my experience what is already present in my lived uh, experience of being alive that is already holding me, that is already infusing me, nourishing me, right? With the strength that I need to carry on, right? To go through life um, with an open heart, at least a more open heart, an open mind, at least a more open mind, right? To live engaged, I think a lot of us talk about it that way. Uh, we don't want to merely live. We, we don't want to merely survive. We want to be truly alive, right? And so we need encouragement to do that. So I'm going to lead us through a very simple kind of guided meditation today for just the next few minutes. And um, I encourage you for the duration of this uh, short time to find a space um, uh, that you can sit that allows you to be upright uh, and to be comfortable. So maybe that's your desk chair, maybe that's lying down on the floor, um, maybe that's sitting wherever it is you're already sitting. But I'll encourage you to, for the next couple of minutes, just allow your eyes to blink closed and to notice for just a moment how you've chosen to arrange your bones and muscles, the posture that your body is in, and make an adjustment if you wish, if it's necessary, to allow you to feel not only comfortable, but also upright in some, in some um, emblematic way. Upright meaning aware, alert. You're choosing to be a little bit more engaged with your experience. And when you have even a smaller sense of your intentionality around posture. I offer you the experience of um, the great earth 
to ground and connect you. And what I mean is simply remind yourself of the parts of your body that are touching the earth and its great stillness. So for many of us, that could be the soles of our feet resting against the floor. That might be your back or your seat on your chair, on a cushion, on the floor. We are making a decision where we want our awareness, what we're choosing to include. And by choosing to include our awareness of the great still earth, I want to remind us that this is something that we always experience. We are always in contact with her support through the soles of our feet, through our backs, through our seats. We are always, in fact, in contact with this vast, still, supportive, stable, earth. And I'll remind you of something I hope you already sense, something perhaps you already know, that this earth is your inheritance, that its stability and support is offered freely, and it belongs to you no less than to any other being. And when we are lacking and we feel like we are deprived of courage, of nourishment, of energy, perhaps we can remind ourselves simply by recalling our contact with the huge earth that our energy and our life force is in no way separate from hers. We are, in fact, her awareness in a two-legged, two-armed form. We are walking, speaking, knowing on behalf of all beings. And we are an extension of limitless energy and limitless courage. Simply by nature of our birthright as living conscious beings. It only takes a minute to remind ourselves of this. So you can kind of breathe that awareness deeply into your body with a couple of breaths. And when you're ready, you can blink your eyes open. And I have found in these months, I need to do this frequently. I've struggled as I know we all have um, for direction, for location, as a way of um, connecting myself with something larger, a source of energy, a source of purpose. If nothing else, um, I've drawn upon the Earth's energy and her stability to provide me a sense of being held during times that feel so uh, unsettling and unstable. And I remind you that that birthright is yours as much as it is mine, as much as it belongs to all of us. I hope this is of some help to you. Um, my dear friends at Augsburg, it's wonderful to imagine seeing you even virtually this way. Perhaps we can all imagine sitting in that beautiful chapel together. Um, if there is something that I can do for you, um, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm easy to find at uh, flyingcloudzen.org. And I bid all of us collectively um, peace and resilience and courage in these coming months. Um, and I thank you for your time today. Blessings.